So I was right. I took a rash of shit for two years, but I was right. And everyone was wrong. And yeah, I got a bonus check for it. Sue me. Those of you who are familiar with the big shot know exactly who this guy is and how much money he made betting against the subprime mortgages in 2008. Lipman waited two years to prove he was right. I will do it in two months. In this video, I will explain how I create my setup on this very lucrative forex opportunity that's about to unfold in the next couple of months. I will apply my total trading strategy step by step and I will show you exactly how my indicators work in real time so you might need to get your screenshot button warmed up. And by the end of the video, you will have a choice to be another Lipman or that deep Winston guy, whoever he is, who laughed at the beginning of the movie and came back crawling in the end. There's a lot to uncover, so let's get right into it. If you ask me, what's my favorite thing about Mexico? Tacos will probably come in fourth and tequila won't even make it to the list because I don't drink. My favorite thing about Mexico is the peso, especially when I'm about to short it. It is such an easy currency to trade, especially when you know that the peso follows a very recognizable pattern during the Mexican presidential cycles. And it has been doing so for the past 24 years with exactly the same results each time. And you know me. My trading strategies are not price driven. I have to look behind price. In this trade, the fundamentals that drive the peso's price is the presidential elections. And my indicators were built to recognize these patterns. I will show you that in a second. But first, let's start where every trader should start, the monthly chart. What you see here is the futures monthly chart for the Mexican peso, as you can see at the top MP1. And if you watched my previous video, how I became FTMO all time record holder, you'll know why I do all my analysis on the futures and execute on the CFDs. So you definitely need to watch that video first. Now, please give me your attention, as everything I will explain right now will be inverted when you execute the trade. Because once again, this chart is the peso futures, while on the forex pair, it's going to be the USD Mexican peso, so it's inverted. Which means when I say long, we'll execute a short. If you feel this is already confusing you, please leave a comment down below and I will explain it further. So as Mexico elects a new president every six years, the next presidential election is going to be in June 2024, as you can see here. This line represents the June candle. The previous election was in July 2018. For whatever reason, they moved it up one month this year, but that won't affect anything. So July 2018, let's put a line here. The one before that was on July 2012 and before that July 2000. Let's put all of these lines. And if you notice right here in July 2000, that is the beginning of the chart because the Mexican peso futures contract actually started trading in June 2000. So there's no more historical data available, but we have 24 years and four previous election cycles. So that's more than enough. Look at the chart and tell me, do you see any recognizable patterns? We've said before, trading is all about pattern recognition. And if you are a trader, you should have noticed it by now. What I'm talking about is this pattern right here. Prior to each election, the market drops. However, the election month itself is always a green candle and this is always followed by a pretty long rally. And let me remind you again, when I say a rally, it means we will execute a short. This is our trade. In 2006, quite the drop for four months before the elections. Then the election month itself is a green candle, which makes sense because the Mexican presidential elections always happen at the beginning of the month. And finally, this is followed by a massive rally. 2012, same story. Prior to the elections, the peso is dropping. Then a green candle in the elections month itself, followed by a rally. 2018, again, another drop two to three months before the elections, a green candle in the elections month itself, then it starts to rally. Although this year, not as much as the previous years, this rally wasn't as strong, but still rallied. So if I highlight here each one of these rallies, 
bottom to top. You will be able to see how big each one of them is. Please keep in mind, these are monthly candles. So each one of these rallies are pretty huge, even the 2018 one. So after recognizing the trend, what I do is I look for good entry point, stop loss, and a good take profit. And if you remember, I use supply and demand to find these supply and demand zones to time my trades. I will get into that in a moment. We still haven't finished our fundamental analysis yet. But you can notice here in each one of these bottoms, there's a consistent pattern that shows. The bottom or the start of the rally is always in a month prior to the elections month. So again, these vertical lines represent the elections month itself, so the bottom is always the previous candle. I will now move these vertical lines to stand on the start of the rally, which are the June months. Beautiful. Now as you can see, our setup is beginning to take shape. Now, each time the peso bottomed before each election, it didn't bottom randomly anywhere. Of course not. It bottomed where there was monthly demand. Let's draw each one of these demand zones. I will highlight them in yellow. As you can see, I'm still not concerned with pinpointing anything, I'm just getting a monthly overview of these demand zones. And I want to remove these lines now, otherwise the chart is going to be a mess, I like my charts to be minimalistic, not like an art project. Now, let's get to the juicy part. I will plot one of my indicators on this chart right now. This is the smart money index, the red line that you see here is the retailers or in other words the dumb money. We want to buy when they are selling and sell when they are buying. When the indicator is pointing all the way up, it means the retailers are buying aggressively. And when it's pointing all the way down like this, it means they are selling. And it comes as no surprise that the retailers were always at the low right before the elections compared to their previous behavior. So June 2006, low relative to where they were before. June 2012, low relative to where they were before. June 2018, same exact thing. The retailers were very bearish in each one of these cases. And then the market started to rally. That's why some traders refer to them as dumb money because of behavior like this. And they actually don't stop here. They are wrong once again here, three to four months before the elections. They were very bullish compared to their previous behavior. So what happens to the market? It dropped all the way to one month before the elections. This behavior repeats itself in each one of these cycles and consistently being on the wrong side of the trade. So what about the current election cycle in 2024? Well, there's nothing new under the sun. Retailers will most likely be very bullish compared to their previous behavior. I will know for sure when the indicator updates and that's my first go signal. Then and only then, I will start to time my entry because I know the market will collapse. So since our chart here is inverted, I'm placing longs on my prop accounts where I can trade Mexican peso CFD. By the way, that's my appetizer because the real trade, the big short, won't even start until May. Like I said before, this year the presidential elections will be in June instead of July. So the bottom should appear in May and then I can take this rally with me. Is that it? Am I ready to place my trades now? Of course not. We're just getting started. See this monthly zone here? I'm very interested in this. Let's go to the weekly chart now and load up the valuation tool. Let me remind you, the vertical lines are the bottoms. So one month prior to the elections, three Junes and one May. Let's take a look at the valuation tool at this bottom in 2012. The Mexican peso was undervalued versus the dollar, plotted as the purple line. That's why it's almost touching the floor here, extremely undervalued. It also appears to be relatively low to the bonds plotted as the blue line and gold as well, which is the yellow line. So it found a bottom inside a weekly zone and then it rallied. In June 2018, same story. The market found a bottom. It was undervalued versus the dollar and relatively low compared to the bonds and gold. Then it finds itself a demand zone to settle in, confirms the bottom and then starts to rally. 
And from the Smart Money Index, we remember retailers were very bearish during these times, so we are double confirming our bottom. So now, what am I looking for in May 2024? First, I'm waiting for the price to drop, maybe into this weekly demand here. This will be followed by a signal from the Smart Money Index that retailers are very bearish relative to their previous behavior. Next, I want to see this purple line drop all the way to the bottom. This means the Mexican peso is undervalued versus the dollar. Ideally, I want to see all three, gold, bonds and dollar undervalued in May. Have you noticed that we haven't talked about price yet? Like I said before, price follows the fundamentals. That's why I only apply technical analysis after the confirmation from the valuation tool and the smart money index. And it's very straightforward. And what I see here are high quality weekly and monthly demand zones that I just cannot ignore. So the plan is simple. I will wait for the drop all the way down here in May, position my longs, aka my shorts, and hold it through the election month in June, which has always been a full green candle on the monthly chart and maybe even hold on to that all the way into mid or the end of the year. But don't forget, we still have the first course, the small short three months before the elections. But this year it is a bit tricky because there are no high quality zones nearby. I might position myself in late March or in April. I can see there are a couple of supply zones here, but I don't know if the price will rally all the way up. But if it does, we'll have to be overvalued versus the Dollar and we'll see the retailers on the smart money index extremely bullish as we discussed before. Anyway, the higher probability trade for me is the long aka the big short. That's the main course. I can see some of you are already getting confused but if you understand everything I've said so far maybe you are able to take this trade as well. Let's face it guys. Life is plotted on a curve and our journey as traders is the never ending seek to be ahead of this curve because it means we are one step ahead of the crowd and that's what I believe my method does. It gives me and my students an edge against the market and increases the chances of our success. What you saw today is what we do every day to develop a new generation of traders who respect the fundamentals and as a result they have become consistent earners. And you are part of this journey right now because each time I get overwhelmed with your likes and comments I go to tell my team guys we need to put more value in our content. Thank you for being part of our journey. Happy and safe peso trading.